Uh, have you guys got any phobias? Okay. Have a fear of speaking on Zoom? No one's afraid of being raped in jail. <laughs> Dude, that'd be terrible. So we've all got fears, right? That's right. We've all got fears, but how specifically? What do you mean by fear, Adrian? So sometimes we have to recover the information. And someone, someone, sometimes someone tells me they're afraid to speak in public. I might be, well, you're speaking to me pretty well and we're in public. So someone says to me, you know, they're afraid to speak in public. And I'm like, oh, you're speaking to me pretty clear. And we're in a park or we're in a business meeting. We're, we're out in public. You're talking to me pretty well. They're like, oh, no, no, no. I, I, mean, I mean on the stage. So, you know, I, I, I might walk them up to a stage. There's no one there. And I, I put them on the stage and I keep talking to them. So you, you're totally fine speaking on stage. And they're like, oh, no, no. What I mean is I can't speak on stage when all these people are looking at me. Oh, so we're getting more and more and more and more specific. And if we want to help someone maybe speak on stage or get over a phobia, wouldn't it be good sometimes to focus down and find out what the specific fear is? And then, okay, so the person is afraid of speaking in front of an audience of people when they're looking at him. Well, what if you're drunk? <laughs> or what if they're drunk, you're sober? Or what if you're talking about your favorite subject and you're in flow and loving it? When we can pinpoint what the problem is, you know what we can do then? We can go even deeper and deeper because perhaps it isn't speaking in front of people that actually gets them scared. Maybe they're actually concerned about being judged. Or maybe they're actually concerned about something else. Now, if you can get deeper and deeper and deeper and actually find out what it is, then you could just work on that or change that rather than trying to get them on stage and coach them on stage or coach them to overcome their fear over and over and over again just ask a few questions and get down and 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 down now till you get to that little thing fear of being judged or something like that okay and maybe you could do something with that but even if you don't, even if you don't stop the fear of being judged, at least they have more awareness. At least they have more awareness. Okay, now if they have awareness that they have a fear of being judged, we can go deeper again. Uh, but maybe deeper differently, like maybe where specifically did it come from? Or what's the purpose of it? If we go to where did it come from? We might use a process called timeline therapy, which we do at the end of our training. So there we, we go back to the root cause, deeper, deeper, down, down. We go back to the root cause and we may change that initial memory. Or before we get to the end of the course, we will do this thing called reframing. And in reframing, we look, we get closer to the root cause and we look at it from a different angle or from a different frame. And often that just changes, changes that one little thing that changes everything. You could be living in an, in an environment where everybody is judging you. Let's say you are, um, you are an influencer, then for sure everybody is judging you. Right now with Scarlett Johansson having a, a fight with Disney, with the company, Everybody is judging that in any direction. So that could be part of the environment. It could be also part of the beliefs. I judge, therefore I am, could be a belief. But what does it mean? And I would like to um, also connect this to the question from the, from the chat. Uh, 
So uh, the, the question was from Sia, are fears the same as phobias? Um, it, it's pretty much the same as what we were discussing right now. It depends on where it is and what the subject of the fear is, what the specific inner workings of the fear of the phobia is. Uh, generally, you can say there are two different kinds of fears, realistic one and, and unrealistic ones. So real ones and uh, surreal ones or irreal ones. So the ones that are real, that would be fears, for instance, somebody had cancer and survived cancer and now has so and so many years to uh, to have the checking each year and each year there is a fear of uh, getting a result that the cancer is resurfacing that is a real fear because the person actually experienced the, the specific situation it can be a different kind of fear <laughs> i can tell you a story about that uh, when you have for instance fear of spiders spiders per se, are not dangerous. However, people can perceive them as dangerous. You can have the aerial or the, 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 the surreal fear of a spider crawling over your skin. And I go, dun, 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 and you can feel the small little legs on your skin and you can maybe already feel how it could have an effect on your whole physique and your uh, constitution when there is this, this well, maybe heavy spider crawling up your hand. So, and that already, this little story can create fear for some for some people and some, some people could just like, yeah, so what? Okay, so there is a spider, I'll just, and it's gone. And that's the difference between fears. For someone, a fear can be very realistic because they actually survived the situation where this fear was relevant for the instinct of survival. And it can be another situation where the instinct of survival was not relevant, but there is just an, an, an unreal fear that surfaced. And from this unreal fear, there a uh, phobia can, uh, can happen. Like, for instance, the, the, uh, the agoraphobia, which would be the fear of, uh, I think, open spaces, for instance, or uh, claustrophobia, which would be the fear of of closed quarters or, um, areas where everything is very small and you feel confined. So basically, when we are trying to specify and understand what fear means and where the fear is, we can, we can as coaches, we can identify uh, the placement of the fear. Is it in the neurological layers? Is it in the identity? That uh, would be rather hard. If somebody defines themselves by a, by a fear, uh, I would personally say, oh, that's going to be a piece of work. If somebody is just, you know, um, having the fear in an environment layer or maybe in the behavior layer, then it's going to be way easier to work with it. The intensity might be the same, but the, uh, the, the exposure might be a different one. If you have it all day, okay, that's one thing. But if you have it all day because of your identity, Whoa, that's a whole different game. So here, when you work with a person, make sure to find out where the fear or the the wish, the need, the desire, whatever you're looking for. We don't we don't have to focus on fear only, where this is placed within the neurological layers, and that helps us to find out where the best lever is to either reduce the fear or intensify the desire. If somebody really would like to achieve something, well, how about turning the notch to 11 when it comes down to really wanting, to really being motivating, to reaching this goal? 